Hey, happy Thursday. Hope your day's going great for you already. Um, our scripture today and our word of the day comes from Genesis chapter 27, verses 41 through 46. And it's actually great. It's a revenge that's being plotted. This is a story. It has lots of great uh, uh, elements in this story. Uh, the world teaches you to look after yourself. Do what you need to do to get ahead. Make sure that you're number one. And this story, if you read it and you look at it, it follows along the same thing that's happening hundreds and thousands of years later. Same things is going on. Same things are happening in the world. You see, there was this um, mother who decided that one of her sons ought to be favored over the other son. So she helped the younger son plot to swipe stuff from the older son. She favored that son. Kind of reminds me of like when you go to a, uh, a little league ball game. I don't know if any of you have ever been to a little league ball game, especially if you've got a child or a grandchild that's playing in the game. You're thinking your child is the best. You want your child in there because there's nobody as good as your child. When, however, the truth be known, there may be a lot of other children out there that are a lot better than your child, but you're a little prejudiced towards your child. This mother did the same thing. She pushed her child to the forefront. Matter of fact, his name Jacob actually means someone who seizes, someone who circumvents, someone who usurps. And God had a plan, but a greedy family member stuck their nose into the situation, being the mom. Rebecca, both boys' mother, realized you could, be, you could because of her deceitfulness, she could actually lose both sons in one incident because Esau was angry that his birthright had been stolen. And he started plotting, how am I going to get even? Hey, dad's a little old. Dad's looking at maybe his days on this earth are gone. Abraham is headed toward passing. And like all good moms, she wants her son to retreat, not to lose his life. She wants to save his life. So hopefully she will allow the other son's anger to cool down and he won't take revenge. Can I give you a little advice? One of the things that I've learned about anger, anger can be very destructive. It really can, especially out of control anger. So here's a little thing that I learned a few years back. It's called HALT. Don't get too hungry. Don't get too angry. Don't get too lonely. And don't get too tired. So if you're faced with one of those situations where you see things going on and you want to intercede, sometimes when you get angry, be careful. Hit the brakes. Take a deep breath surrender and that's what this mom needed to do and she was hoping that her son would do the same thing looking fast forward romans 12 19 said beloved never avenge yourselves don't take revenge for yourself if someone has offended you you allow god to take care of that but leave it up to the wrath of god if god's going to take care of it for you for it's written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord so right now you may be plotting how you want to get even with someone, like in this situation, who you feel like has wronged you. Can I just encourage you to halt? May I challenge you to put that into practice today? Stop. Take a deep breath. Surrender your thoughts. Surrender your revenge to God and do what God has asked you to do. Because after all, good, bad, or indifferent, God is always in control if we'll allow him to be in control of our lives. Will you join me in prayer? Father, thanks for loving us. Thanks that you hit the brakes in our lives sometimes. Father, this is a great story that reminds us no matter what someone intends for bad, you're going to turn it for good for your purpose because we're called. All things truly do work together for those who love you, for those who are called according to your purpose. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a great rest of your Thursday.